Look around the world at any socialist economy. Who are the rich people? It is those connected to and in government. Sadly, a traditionally free and democratic nation can end up down that path of misery as citizens realize that they can vote for gifts from the public treasury paid for by someone else. From that moment on, this growing constituency always votes for candidates who promise the most benefits. As this goes on over decades, this continued loose fiscal policy eventually leads to a dictatorship. It's what's known as the Titler Cycle. Hi, I'm Jamie Schmale, Member of Parliament for Halliburton Core the Lakes Brock and host of The Blueprint, Canada's Conservative Podcast. Canada is facing an unprecedented attack on its democracy. Misinformation and anti-substantive virtue signaling is coming from the federal government. Despite the blood, sweat and tears it took for Canada to become the nation that it is, cracks in our democracy can be formed relatively easy should we misunderstand what makes our country strong. As a matter of fact, it was the great Scottish judge and scholar, Lord Alexander Tytler, who predicted that all democracies go through these eight stage cycles, ending in dependency and bondage. During the dawn of any democracy, we see that there is the desire to survive and escape the tyranny of the ruling class, bringing people together. The disenfranchised seek similarities with one another and through shared cultural or spiritual identity, leading them to begin putting the well-being of the collective above the individual. However, no one wants to live hand to mouth, nor do they want to be put into the position where one must sacrifice one another just for the sake of survival. This gives rise to courageous people, people who champion liberty and freedom so that their descendants will have a chance to live a better life than they did. By creating a society on the laws which reflect the virtues of liberty, the newfound freedoms allow for individuals to keep the fruits of their labors and pursue opportunities that would not have been possible under an oppressor. With these new opportunities comes an era of abundance, a time of relative comfort, health, and convenience. But this gives rise to people who prioritize their own frivolous pursuits over the well-being of others, leaders who seek to enrich their own wealth at the expense of those that put them there. When such leaders stray from their mission by putting themselves over the people and escaping accountability, we begin to see cracks in society. At this stage, culture of complacency embeds the idea that the responsibility to defend our rights rests not with each of us, but with someone else. By shifting the blame and responsibility, corrupt leaders continue to wager the well-being of the people to further their own out-of-touch pursuits for greater influence. Puis on sait, on en connaît tous des gens qui sont en train d'hésiter un petit peu. On va continuer d'essayer de les convaincre, mais aussi des gens qui sont farouchement opposés à la vaccination. Qui sont extrémistes. Qui croient pas dans la science, qui sont souvent misogynes, souvent racistes aussi. C'est un, 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 une petite, un petit groupe, mais qui prend de la place. Et là, il faut faire un choix en tant que leader, en tant que pays. Est-ce qu'on, est-ce qu'on tolère ces gens-là ou est-ce which results in people being apathetic to the larger picture and supporting only those who will benefit them. On the other hand, these leaders increasingly feel entitled to want more from the newly disenfranchised and to keep growing their power. They offer temptations in the form of short-term relief and empty promises in exchange for votes instead of the means to take back individual liberties. The final straw in shattering a democracy is the attempt to force people to be dependent on the engorged leadership. As the nation is overrun with corruption, scandals, and bureaucratic redundancies, opportunities dry up, social circumstances get worse, and people become exponentially more desperate to put food on the table for their family. They rely on the short-term relief from the very people who are responsible for creating such a despondent environment. It is from this crowd, leaders pick winners and losers, handing out money and opportunity to those who will keep them in power, completely abandoning the principles of liberty and actively forcing people back into bondage. It is up to every free Canadian to do their own research and determine where they believe our nation is on this cycle. My beliefs are colored by the numerous scandals this government has produced and continues to produce. It has been galvanized when Justin Trudeau directly challenged 
the will of the people by taking the Speaker of the House of Commons to court and severely damaged the institution of Parliament in this country. We need to ask ourselves, is our government truly standing up for our freedom? Or are they giving us the tools to make us more dependent on them? At the end of the day, if you really want to help every person, you expand the economy and create opportunities because abundance equals peace.